All right, well, listen, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Ken Burke. I am the co-founder and CEO of PayQuick, 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 <laughs> and, uh, and we enable legal marijuana commerce. So I've got a series of slides to go through, and um, let's get started. So the biggest problem facing the marijuana industry today is what do you do with all the cash? And marijuana businesses can't get bank accounts. As we all know, this business is huge. It's going to 20, billion, 20 or to $25 billion in the next few years, and it's going to be a $100 billion business as marijuana becomes legal across the country. And this creates huge problems in terms of cash and banking relationships. This is what happens right now. As you look across the top, you see cash going from the consumer to the retailer, and from the retailers to either the wholesalers or the growers. We call them producer processors. And then the lines going down is where they pay their vendors, they pay their taxes, and that's all happening in cash. You also can't get legal debit and credit card transactions to remove cash from the system. So this is how the cash is flowing right now. And this creates a lot of problems. From the consumer level, you've got a lack of convenience, you've got lack of security, uh, reputational risk um, for purchasing marijuana. On the producer, processor, and retailer side, that is the growers, the lack of bankability is a huge issue for them. They can't get bank accounts. There's a tremendous risk from lack of security and accountability standpoint, the risk of violent crime for carrying around large sums of cash, and of course it's horribly inconvenient for them to deal with cash. The government and law enforcement also have huge issues facing them from this cash intensive business. You've got illegal sales, you've got money laundering, um, you've got drug cartels, and of course you've got the risk of violent crime. And that's what my co-founder Keith Marks and I realized was the problem in the industry. So we developed PayQuick, and this was our mission statement, was to bring well-established, proven payment processing and banking services to this industry. And you do that through compliance. And, and our mission is to make sure that our clients are complying with the federal law out there that's available for dealing with marijuana, and of course, each state's law. Our core account holders are licensed, producers, processors, retailers, wholesalers, and the consumers. But everyone has to have a state license within their particular state to operate their marijuana business. Our other clients are what we call ancillary businesses. And those are the vendors. Those are people who are serving the marijuana industry, but they don't touch the plant. So you've got attorneys and accountants. You've got landlords. You've got insurance companies. You've got payroll services. And those are what we call ancillary businesses businesses, and they also have PayQuick accounts. Well, this is what our solution does. We eliminate or reduce the amount of cash changing hands. We provide for electronic payments through the entire supply chain from seed to sale. We allow them to pay each other electronically instead of paying each other in cash. With respect to the cash that does come in, we have armored cars that pick up the cash, take it to the Fed, deposit it into the Fed, and it gets credited to each individual's PayQuick account. Now, by tracing the money from sale back to seed, and I'll, come to, I'll go into a little more detail in this a little bit later, but as you know, most states have seed to sale traceability systems. We trace the money from sale back to seed, and when we do that, and we layer that with our compliance program, it makes that money safe for deposit into any financial institution. And when the money is safe for deposit into a financial institution, well, marijuana businesses can get bank accounts. So we enable legal, bankable marijuana business. What is PayQuick? You know, exactly what are we? Well, we're a proprietary technology and a compliance platform that has a very sophisticated e-wallet for managing cash and providing for electronic payments. We ensure that our clients through our compliance program comply with the Cole Memo, FinCEN guidance, and state law so that the state knows that this business is operating legally. We also provide bank accounts for our clients with our partner banks. Because of our compliance program, our partner banks are willing to open normal business bank accounts for these businesses, knowing full well that they're marijuana companies. By providing access to banking for marijuana businesses, these businesses can operate with normal commerce practices. Finally, we also let consumers pay through an electronic 
e-wallet, works similar to a Starbucks card. So that's the business to consumer portion of our platform. And then the B2B, the business to business portion of our platform, works much like PayPal. Again, allowing for electronic payments between sellers and buyers. And with our compliance program, where we do quarterly on-site compliance assessments of our businesses, their cash is safe, as I've mentioned, for deposit in any financial institution. Let me, let me draw an analogy for you, essentially. If you picture a funnel, right? And at the top of the funnel, the wide end, this is where the money from marijuana transactions go into the funnel. The stem of that funnel is PayQuick. That's our compliance platform. So when it goes through our compliance platform and it comes out the bottom, it's safe for deposit in any financial institution across the country. That's what PayQuick is. So, graphically speaking, right now if you look at this picture, this is how our platform works. Across the top, we still have cash going from the consumer to the retailer and from the retailer to the producer processors and the distributors and wholesalers. But as you drop down on this guide, on this uh, diagram, you can see that the cash is picked up by Armored Car and put into the retailer's PayQuick account. It's picked up by Armored Car and it's put into the producer processor or wholesaler's PayQuick account. From there, we allow for account-to-account -account transfers. Think of PayPal, right? When you buy something on eBay, you just pay the seller through your PayPal account, and the money's transferred from your PayPal account to the seller's PayPal account. We work the exact same way. When the marijuana grower ships the inventory to the retail store, the retailer just logs into their PayQuick account and electronically transfers the money from the retailer's PayQuick account to the grower's PayQuick account. At that point, as you can see if you drop down the diagram one more time, the retailer and the producer processor, the grower, can send the money electronically to their bank account via an ACH transfer, or they can pay their vendors. We have a bill pay service where, where they put in the vendor information and we will mail a physical check to that vendor. The other important thing that they can do is they can pay their excise taxes electronically through our platform. So you don't have the situation that we've seen in a number of states, Oregon, Washington, Colorado, with people driving to the local government agency with $150,000, $250,000 in cash in a duffel bag to pay their taxes. Our platform eliminates that and allows them to pay their taxes electronically. So, as I've mentioned, by reverse engineering the seed to sale system, we make the money safe for deposit into any financial institution. Our on-site compliance assessments that we do four times a year, as I mentioned, we check for two things. One, the business is not implicating any of the eight enforcement priorities in the Cole memo. And number two, that they're operating in compliance with state law. We are a federally registered money service business and a licensed money transmitter in the states in which we operate, unless of course we're exempt. So what that means is that we file the currency transaction reports for the money that comes in when it's over $10,000, and most importantly, we file the suspicious activity reports. We file the marijuana limited SARS, the marijuana priority SARS, or the marijuana termination SAR for every dollar coming through our platform. We file those when the money comes in. Our partner banks have been through their FDIC safety and soundness exams and their IT exams. That's how we know this is working and it's working well. They actually went through those exams over a year ago in December of 2015 and passed with flying colors. Our volume with our partner banks has gone up incredibly over the last 12 to 14 months after they've had their FDIC uh, safety and soundness and IT exams. That's how we know we're working in compliance with federal law and the FDIC guidelines for banking this industry and the FinCEN guidelines for banking this industry. Our compliance program, which is really the backbone of what we do, has two levels of extra due diligence under the Bank Secrecy Act and the Anti-Money Laundering Control Act. One is expanded customer due diligence. That's often talked about as the know your customer due diligence requirements under the Bank Secrecy Act, where we review their license application, we check with their background checks, we do quarterly on-site visits, and we really know our customers to make sure that they're not a, drug, a front for drug cartels, they don't have firearms on the premises, <clears throat> they're not selling the minors or across state lines, etc. 
So that's our cust expanded customer due diligence. We also do expanded transaction due diligence on every single transaction going through our platform. As I mentioned, we file the Marijuana Limited, Marijuana Priority, or Marijuana Termination SARS. Our armored cash pickups have daily cash reconciliation reports that we then detail all of the cash deposit into the system and relate that to their sales that are reported through the seed to sale traceability system. We do monthly reconciliations of these deposits with the state traceability system. The licensees certify their deposits for us. And as I mentioned, we file directly with FinCEN our SARS and CTRs. We've also developed, because we've been doing this for 15 months now in full operation, we also have developed a series of red flags of what's usual and customary and what's outside of usual and customary. And what is outside of usual and customary are those red flags, and that's something that's required by the FinCEN guidance of any financial institution like us or any bank that is servicing this industry. How are we different from our competitors? Well, first and foremost, we're registered federally as a money service business, and we're licensed as a money transmitter in Washington, Oregon, Arizona, and we're soon to be licensed in Nevada and California and the other states that we go to. We enable legal debit and credit card transactions through a digital payment platform that we've implemented. We also ensure that our customer, our competitors don't do is that the money is safe for deposit into any financial institution. We get bank accounts for our clients, which our competitors don't. We do quarterly on-site compliance assessments, which our competitors don't. We file the currency transaction reports and the SARS, which our competitors don't. There are competitors out there that, that say they help businesses or they help banks, but the bank still needs to file those currency transaction reports and those SARS themselves with us. The bank doesn't need to do it because the money's coming into the PayQuick platform and we file it, and then when the money's transferred from our platform to the bank, well then the bank would file it themselves. But for every transaction, every 10 transactions that come in that we file, the bank files one on that one transfer to the bank. And I think one of the most important things that sets our platform apart from anybody else's out there is that we provide for electronic payments through the entire supply chain from consumers to retailers and from retailers to their growers and their suppliers and then both from retailers and growers to their ancillary service providers who they need to pay. There's nobody else in the marketplace that's doing that. So while we do have some competitors on the consumer side that have a kiosk or something like that, they don't handle the B2B side of the business. So that's truly what differentiates us from our competitors that we cover the entire supply chain and allow folks to pay their taxes in ancillary businesses. There are significant barriers to entry to what we're doing. PayQuick, we've been around and in operation for the last 15 months. We started the business three and a half years ago, my co-founder and I, but we launched operation 15 months ago and we have significant traction and we are the market leader and we've captured significant mind share in the country for the PayQuick platform. We're out there, we've been operating for over 15 months, uh, I'm sorry, 18 months, a year and a half. Um, and people know who we are. We've captured that mind share. We're also integrating into the POS systems, into those point of sale systems, so that people can pay using PayQuick right at the point of checkout. We um, are obtaining credit card processing and acquiring banks approval for legal credit card processing in this industry mainly because of our compliance program. They trust us and what we're doing to enable legal credit card processing for marijuana transactions. The other thing we do is whenever we go into a state, we first go and meet with the regulators and the state legislatures in that state, and we become a trusted advisor to these state regulators and legislatures, legislatures to tell them what we've seen that works and what we've seen that doesn't work and make recommendations to them as they're building out their state marijuana regulations. We're heavily involved in California with the legislature here and in Ohio in advising them on how to build out their system. Obviously our competitors face substantial reputational risks and securing and obtaining a money transmitter license for each state is a difficult and time-consuming process. And finally I will tell you that developing a software platform that goes 
B2B and B2C, so it covers the entire supply chain between businesses to business and businesses to consumer is an expensive, time-consuming, and arduous process. So those are the barriers to entry in this industry and why PayQuick is leading the way. How do we make our money, right? As an investor, you certainly want to know how we make our money. Well, here's our revenue model. We've got two types of subscriptions for the PayQuick program. You've got a basic subscription and a premium subscription that provide for you know, different bells and whistles and different levels of functionality as I've just spoken about. So I don't want to go through those different levels of functionality right now, but our, what we do to make our money is we charge a transaction fee based on the uh, money changing hands, essentially. So we have a sliding scale for money transmitted between PayQuick businesses. We charge 2.75% on consumer transactions, and that's paid for by the marijuana retailer. The consumer never pays a dime. Uh, we do have an instant load function on our iPhone app um, that charges them 99 cents, but essentially the consumer never pays a dime. And on the business side, whoever's receiving the money pays the fee. So if the retailer is receiving payment from the consumer, the consumer, the retailer pays a fee. If a grower or producer processor or ancillary business is receiving payment from a, another marijuana business, then the receiver of the funds pays a small percentage for a transaction fee. So that's how we make our money. We charge a very small percentage to whoever's receiving the money electronically through our platform. Our tr we are not a startup anymore. We've been in business since uh, the summer of 2015, 18 months now, and in the fourth quarter of 2016, we processed nearly $25 million through our platform. So we have significant traction in the market. Where are we going in the future? We expect our revenue to grow to $145 million by 2020. As we know, this is going to be a 20 to 25 billion, maybe 30 billion dollar business by 2020, and it's growing to a hundred billion dollar business. So through our transaction fees, this is where we expect our revenue to grow, and these are conservative, conservative numbers as we take our platform and roll it out. How are we going to receive, how are we going to generate that revenue? Well, we do have the first mover advantage as we take our platform in Washington. Colorado, Arizona, and roll it out across the country to all of the other states that have legal medical or recreational marijuana and have adopted seed to sale traceability systems. We're driving consumer adoption through in-store promotions. Our software platform is fully scalable to accommodate expansion across the entire United States. And we're leveraging, like I mentioned, we're leveraging our know-how in Washington and replicating our model in Colorado, Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, Massachusetts, Alaska, California, Michigan, Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maine. And in fact, in Ohio, Ohio's building their own closed loop banking system and they're issuing an RFP and we've already met with the regulators in Ohio. They loved our platform and will be bidding on and expect to be awarded the contract to build the closed loop platform for the state of Ohio. We also have established key political relationships in each state so people know us, they trust us, that is the regulators and the legislatures, and are promoting our platform because of the benefits we provide to government, governmental institutions and regulators when folks use the PayQuick platform by reducing cash, eliminating money laundering, it's fully traceable so they can audit people's sales and people's collection of money in order to make sure that the government get, gets paid the appropriate excise taxes. Here are, expansion, uh, here are our expansion plans for 2016 to 2018 as we replicate our model across the country to all of the states that have adopted legal medical or recreational marijuana statutes. And as you can see, um, it's quite significant, but we've already built our mass trap. It's just a matter of replicating it in each new state. And finally, do we have the horses to get it done? Do we have the right people to get it done? And as a matter of fact, we do. I'm Ken Burke. I'm, a co I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO. I've been a corporate transactional and compliance attorney for over 25 years. I graduated law school from Loyola Law School in Los Angeles in 1987. My co-founder, Keith Marks, has over 30 years of experience in real estate, downstream petroleum, and investment banking. 
He holds a BA from Arizona State, and he also has a JD. He is also an attorney. Mauricio Braun, our chief operating officer, has over 20 years of entrepreneurial experience running large organizations and uh, compliance companies that he's built and sold in the past. Our CTO, Anil Sahai, has a master's from the Sloan MIT School and runs our technology and our technology vision. And finally, from a compliance standpoint, May Thompson is our chief compliance officer who spent over 20 years with MoneyTree as a compliance officer. But that's not enough. We also have key advisors who are lobbyists and regulators in the industry, both in the banking industry, lawyers and banking attorneys uh, like Chris Massey, Brian Doherty out of Miller, Nash, Graham and Dunn. Miles Kahn is our industry liaison. He's an attorney and a recreational marijuana store owner up in Washington. And Denny Eliasson is a lobbyist for the uh, Washington Bankers Association. At this point, we have approximately 18 employees in our offices, offices and are fully up and running. We're hiring more. But we've been in business and have significant traction. We've been doing this for more than 18 months. And we're ready to roll it out across all the other states that we have not yet penetrated. So we have the team necessary to execute our game plan. That is it for the presentation. Thank you very much for your time. If you've got further inquiries, I'll leave this on the screen. Please contact Mark Strauss, uh, our Director of Investor Relationship Relations, and his number is on the screen and his email address is on the screen. So thank you. And now I'll open it up for questions. First question, could you list the main reasons why cannabis businesses, businesses cannot get bank accounts or bank accounts are closed? Yes. The main reason that cannabis businesses cannot get bank accounts is because the bank is not able to ensure that no money from illegal sales is going to be deposited into that bank account. And that's why the banks won't open accounts for them. That's the problem that we solve because of our compliance platform. Remember the stem of the funnel is our compliance. We make sure that no money from illegal transactions get deposited into the PayQuick platform and we make that same representation and that same assurance to our banks. And that's why the banks um, will bank our clients and open accounts for our clients and will accept money from PayQuick. Now, Ken, the second part of that question, how costly is it for banks to have that type of compliance? And, and would banks in the future uh, hire you guys to, to uh, take care of that compliance for them instead of initiating their own platform? It's incredibly expensive for banks to do the know your customer due diligence that's required to bank this industry, to file all of the SARs and the CTRs, and to handle all of the cash coming in. That's where we step in and we stand shoulder to shoulder with the banks to take that burden off of the bank. So even, excuse me, when, if banks do get involved, they're going to want to have their clients also working with PayQuick to backstop their own compliance programs. Next question, how can you compete with bigger providers that will come into the space after it becomes federal legal? And, and, and they made an example here, First Data, which is a payment processor. Um, well, there, the First Data as a payment processor really works in the business to consumer space, right? They work because they process credit cards. Remember, the main portion of our business is not the business of the consumer space. It's the B2B space where we're the only one out there allowing for electronic transfers business to business. And in fact, I'll tell you that there are lots of people right now who are building exchanges. That is where growers list all of their marijuana for sale on a website and the retailers can order through that website. And when they get to checkout, we are integrating with them to be the payment method for checking out and purchasing marijuana through those online platforms. That's not something that First Data is going to get into. The question is 100% right. The consumer-based business is you're going to have margin compression when the big boys come into the consumer-based space. But we're not going to have that in the B2B space, and that's the main thrust of our business right now. Next question. 
your sales strategy, strategy? Do you establish relationships with the banks or directly with the cannabis businesses? We establish relationships with both. The banks that are banking the industry right now, say in Colorado, we establish our relationship with them, we open our bank accounts with them, and then they promote us to their clients. We also go out directly and hold seminars and educational seminars and have a sales team in each state that goes out and markets directly to the cannabis businesses. We also participate in trade shows. We sit on panels at trade shows to educate the industry, and that's how we push our, our sales team out there. I mean, that, that's a good strategy. So as new can, as cannabis businesses establish, go to banks and try to establish these new accounts, when they open up those new accounts, the banks refer uh, pay quick to those new clients. Is that how it works? That's correct. And I will also tell you, in Washington State, if you call the Department of Financial Institutions and ask for a bank account, how do I get banked, they will actually refer you to PayQuick to work with us. Well, we're listed on their website as one of the solutions in Washington State for people to help, to help cannabis businesses get bank accounts in Washington. So because of our relationship and our trusted advisor status with the regulators, the state regulators are also referring folks to PayQuick. Next question. Can your platform facilitate retail online transactions as well as brick and mortar? If so, how would that work? We absolutely can. That's called a gateway. And that's through an API from a technology standpoint into that online platform. So we, all, we accommodate both brick and mortar and we accommodate the online platforms like the exchanges I just mentioned. Next question, what will happen to your business if and when major banks change course and accept cannabis customers and allow credit card purchasing like usual business? We are just as strong when that happens because remember, we stand shoulder to shoulder with the banks from a compliance standpoint. So one, I don't think that's happening for a very, very long time. It's, it's just not. Big banks move very, very slowly. What you're seeing now is credit unions and community banks serving this industry, and I think it's going to stay that way for the next at least five to ten years. But in any event, it still doesn't hurt us because our compliance program buttresses and backstops a bank's compliance program so that they want to have their clients as part of the PayQuick platform because it helps them and it eases their compliance burdens, both from an on-site compliance assessment standpoint from a filing SARS and CTR standpoint, et cetera. Okay. One, one of the questions, Ken, is, you know, how much money are you guys raising? And, and uh, you know, I guess some, some uh, viewers, you know, want to know about a private placement. But I, I think you can call Ken. His number is right there. Uh, well, they can call your investor relations guy. Yeah, and they get those, you know. Call Mark Strauss, and we can get you out a, a, a book and all the details of what we're raising. Okay. Uh, next question. How many licensed cannabis businesses are currently using, utilizing your platform? In Washington State alone, we have over 200 on our platform in Washington. We're rolling out this quarter into Colorado, and we expect to add another three to 400 in Colorado. And through our uh, credit card processing and integration into the point of sale system, we expect to have another two to 300 retailers coming online in Washington alone. Uh, next question, which online exchanges are you integrating with? We are integrated right now with uh, Grasshopper Hub, and we're speaking with a number of other ones, but we're subject to confidentiality agreements right now with respect to those. Uh, next question, are you working with any members of the Fed and DEA? We are not working with any members of the Fed or DEA. As I mentioned before, the FDIC has come in and done their safety and soundness exams of our partner banks. And it's funny, the first thing they asked for when the FDIC examiners came in was, show us the PayQuick file. How are you guys working with PayQuick? What does your BSA AML compliance programs look like? What do PayQuick's BSA AML compliance programs work, look like? I will tell you from a 
uh, from a federal standpoint, we are going and meeting with a number of senators and House members in early April in Washington, D.C., who are pushing for banking reform in the marijuana space. And we have contacted them all. They've gotten back to us immediately and said, when are you next in Washington? We want to meet with you. So we are meeting with a number of uh, federal congressmen and senators in early April. OK, someone uh, got to the webcast a little late. They're asking, where is the fee schedule? Do you have a fee schedule? We do have a fee schedule. But to answer that person's question, we charge a small percentage of the transaction uh, for whoever receives the money. So if a consumer is paying a retailer, the retailer pays 2.75%. When a retailer pays a grower or producer processor, the producer processor pays a small percentage. Or when they pay their accountant, their lawyer, their landlord, their insurance company, the, uh, whoever that ancillary business is, whoever receives the money, pays a small percentage. OK, we've got a two-part question here, Ken. Uh, and I think you touched on the California. Uh, are you planning to expand to California? Are you expanding to plan uh, to expand to Canada? Let's cover California first. California, absolutely 100 um, percent. We just testified in front of uh, Treasurer Chang's Cannabis Banking Working Group. The testimony occurred on February 10th. I was there in front of the working group to talk about PayQuick and our recommendations for California. We have met with all of the top regulators in California, including Jan Owen, Awit Kadane, Alexis Podesta, Lori Ajax, all of these people to present PayQuick to them and what we're doing. And they're dying for us to come to California. And we will be coming to California as soon as the seed to sale traceability comes in place, which should be January of 2018. There are uh, local initiatives in Los Angeles, Humboldt, and Mendocino County to bring traceability, track and trace, to those counties or those cities. And if those are implemented, then we'll come to California earlier. So the bottom line is, yes, we are absolutely coming to California. As far as Canada goes, um, we've got our eye in Canada. We intend to expand to Canada, but we're covering the United States first. OK. Next question. What is, what is PayQuick's outlook of the marijuana industry going forward? I guess it's a, sort of a general question. Uh, probably maybe your opinion on legalization, recreation. Sure. Let me start by first and foremost, they're not going to get the toothpaste back in the tube. The marijuana business is here. There is too much tax dollars involved for this industry to go away. Um, President Trump has said he wants to leave marijuana re regulation to the state, while Attorney General Sessions has, in the past, you know, been hostile to marijuana. He has also indicated in a recent press conference, and you can go look up the transcript of that press conference, that he's going to be following Trump's lead, and that the DOJ has very scarce resources. And that's essentially what the Cole Memo says. So it indicates to me that Sessions is going to follow the Cole Memo. He may supplement it and add a few more bells and whistles of, he wants, of what he wants to see marijuana businesses doing in the states in order to give further guidance to his local, local prosecutors about who to go after and who not to go after. But I don't think it's going away at all. And there's no way that the federal government is going to be able to take hundreds of millions of dollars in state tax revenue out of state coffers. It, this, it's just not going to happen. So I think we'll see some additional regulation. We'll see maybe an expansion of the coal memo, some additional guidance. But I don't think the industry is going away. It's just, it's just too big. Um, and it is tipping. It is about to tip. And if you've not read the book, The Tipping Point, it's a great read that the marijuana industry is about to tip. And, and I don't know if you can answer this question, Ken, but you know, this, this question is, is, is probably way loud. Uh, do you guys have intentions in the future of a public offering IPO? That's a question directed to, uh, to Mark Strauss. OK. Uh, next question, how does PayQuick differ from PayPal? Well, um, that's a great question. So from a functional perspective, we are just like PayPal, because it's a, a means for people to pay each other electronically. But the main difference between us and PayPal, and why PayPal's not in this industry, 
is that PayPal is built from the top down, and they cover the entire country right now. We've built PayQuick from the bottom up, and each state is siloed, if you will, within our software platform because we can't allow a retailer in Washington to order and pay for marijuana from a grower in, in uh, Oregon or vice versa. You can't have a retailer in Oregon buy marijuana from a grower or producer processor in another state. So our platform is siloed within each state so that the money stays within each state, the transactions stay completely within each state that we go into. PayPal can't do that. They're built from the top down and there's no way for them to prevent money tra crossing state lines or people ordering and paying each other across state lines. We can because of the way we built our platform from the bottom up. Uh, next question, Ken. Would, let me see if I can get this question straight here. Uh, what, how, how would you recommend a cannabis company opening up a bank account? What, what would be some of your recommendations on how to open up a bank account? Well, a lot depends on what state they're in, okay? Um, but basically, you've got to be 100% above board and honest and transparent with your bank. Tell them what you're doing. Tell them the business that you're in. Establish a personal relationship with the branch manager so they know you, they trust you, and they, and they trust that you're operating your business in compliance with state law and that you are not implicating any of the eight enforcement priorities in the Cole Memo. That's how you get a bank account. And if you happen to be in Washington or Colorado or Arizona or Oregon, obviously contact us and we'll see what we can do for you. Okay, and last question. Who are your competitors? I know you touched on this a little bit, but who, who are your direct competitors in the cannabis space, or do you have any competitors? We do not have any direct competitors in the cannabis space covering what we do. Certainly there's some folks that are putting kiosks into uh, dispensaries, and they're trying to capture the B2C business when consumers buy from a dispensary or from a retail store. There is nobody that's covering the entire supply chain from seed to sale like we are. That is from the marijuana growers to the retailers to the consumers. We cover the entire supply chain and there's nobody doing that. There's also no one in the industry that's actually taking possession of the money like we do and filing the currency transaction reports and filing the SARS, the suspicious activity reports, the marijuana limited SARS, even these kiosk companies that put a kiosk in the business, in the marijuana business and maybe issue some kind of card or something like that, they're not filing the CTRs and they're not filing the suspicious activity reports. So there's nobody in the industry right now that's doing what we do. Well, thank you, Ken. That concludes our Q&A. Any last uh, comments regarding PayQuick? You know, um, please give Mark Strauss a call if you're interested in investing. Um, we enable legal bankable marijuana commerce, and we've been doing this for over 18 months and putting millions and millions and millions of dollars through our business. So we're not a startup anymore. We're up and running, and we're raising these funds to expand our platform across the country. So please, contact us and grow with us. Ken, we got one last question. Uh, are you integrating via API with MJ Freeway, BioTrack, et cetera? Great question. Uh, we are integrating right now with a company called GreenBits. We are also in discussions with MJ Freeway, Corona, and a number of other uh, POS providers, both at the retail level and at the uh, producer, processor, grower level. So like I said, we're integrated right now with GreenBits, Grasshopper Hub, and we are going to be integrating, and we're in discussions right now, to integrate with a whole host of other, both other POS systems at the retail level and inventory control systems at the grower level. But All keep right, your eyes well, on GreenBits. You. Keep your eyes on GreenBits. They have approximately 60% market share in uh, Washington. People love them up there for the retail stores, and we're going with them into Colorado and Oregon as well. Well, thank you, Ken. That concludes the Pay Quick presentation. Uh, and their phone number uh, is, well, I don't, is it on the screen? 
Ken, I don't see your... Mark Strauss's uh, phone number is on the screen, his cell phone number. You can also call our main number. If you go to our website, www.payquick.com, um, it lists our main number and give us a call. Thank you, Ken. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much.